Have you ever wondered about the unresolved mysteries that linger in the shadows of our past, waiting for the light of truth to expose the chilling details? What happens when the passage of time collides with a cryptic case, concealing a young girl's identity for over three decades? The abyss of the unknown can be daunting, especially for those who yearn for justice, and the unanswered questions can be more terrifying than the mystery itself. These haunting questions haunted the minds of those touched by the unexplainable in a story that unfolded in 1988 in the tranquil town of Millwood, Georgia. Step into the perplexing narrative of Baby Jane Doe, where the inexplicable began its unsettling journey. What transpired with Baby Jane Doe? Who was the heartless person that concealed her remains within an antiquated TV cabinet? Let's take a deeper dive. Welcome back to Urban Crime Stories. In this episode, we will dive into a tale of Kenyatta Kiki Odom, a five-year-old girl found encased in concrete and previously known as Baby Jane Doe, in the heart of Port Jefferson, Long Island, New York, on a tender October day in 1983. Kenyatta graced the world with her presence, but she faced life's challenges from the very beginning. Born with spina bifida, hydrocephalus, and microcephaly, she embarked on a journey that required unwavering care and compassion. Her compassionate doctors shared the testimony of her entrance into the world, describing an open spinal column, hydrocephaly, and microcephaly. The medical team, guided by hope, anticipated that surgical measures, such as the closure of the spinal defect and the reduction of fluid in her delicate brain, would serve as vital interventions to prolong her precious life. However, the pages of Kenyatta's story took an unexpected and tragic turn on December 21, 1988, in the peaceful town of Millwood, Georgia. It was there that Special Agent in Charge Jason Sechrist of the Georgia Bureau of Investigation unveiled the heartbreaking discovery of her remains at a serene dump site. A once vibrant spirit, Kenyatta's body, now cradled in a blanket within a duffel bag, was concealed within a trunk meticulously encased in concrete and hidden in an aging TV cabinet. This poignant revelation left the community in shock and sorrow. In the aftermath, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation Medical Examiner, while confirming the tragedy as a homicide, found themselves unable to unveil the elusive cause of Kenyatta's untimely departure. The perplexing circumstances surrounding her demise became a haunting mystery, casting a shadow over the poignant chapters of her life. As the wheels of time turned and decades unfolded, the unresolved echoes of Kenyatta's story persisted. In 2019, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation undertook a pivotal endeavor to unravel the enigma surrounding the young girl's tragic fate. Their meticulous efforts focused on comparing the extracted DNA from her remains with genealogy databases, and in a turning point, Sechrist revealed that the previous year had seen success. The GBI confirmed that the child had family ties in Albany, Georgia, marking a crucial breakthrough. However, the elusive identities of the girl's parents remained a lingering mystery, casting a shadow over the completeness of the investigation. Approaching the 34th anniversary of the case in December, the GBI, persistent in their pursuit of justice, made a renewed public appeal. This time, their plea was accompanied by a compassionate gesture an anonymous donor offering a $5,000 reward, an incentive designed to encourage the community's collaboration in unraveling the lingering mystery. In a twist of fate, a woman responded to this call for information in January, delivering a pivotal tip that would reshape the narrative. She recounted knowledge of a missing child, a poignant tale woven by the mother, who claimed the child had gone to live with her father. Skepticism surrounded this narrative, as the informant harbored doubts about its authenticity. Sechrist acknowledged the significance of this tip as it finally provided the missing link to identify young Kenyatta, breathing new life into the investigation. Charges were brought forth in connection to her tragic demise. However, Sechrist maintained silence on the motive behind the crime or the specifics of how the young girl met her untimely end. News outlets relying on the indictment reported a chilling detail that the child had perished after her feet and legs were submerged in scalding hot water, adding a layer of horror to the unfolding tragedy. In a recent turn of events, the wheels of justice began to turn as the girl's mother, 56-year-old Evelyn Odom and her boyfriend at the time of the child's tragic death, 
61-year-old Eulister Sanders found themselves in custody on November 9, 2023. A grand jury in Dougherty County, encompassing Albany, issued indictments against both, charging them with felony murder, first-degree cruelty to children, concealing a death, and other counts. As the legal proceedings unfold, there is a collective belief that the evidence amassed goes beyond a reasonable doubt, paving the way for justice to be sought on behalf of Kenyatta. The wheels of justice once set in motion now hold the promise of unveiling the truth and delivering the closure that has eluded this heart-wrenching case for far too long. From the cryptic 1988 discovery to recent indictments against Evelyn Odom and Eulister Sanders, justice is finally in motion for Kenyatta Odom. An anonymous tip reshaped the narrative, breathing new life into the investigation. As legal proceedings unfold, there's hope for closure in this long-pursued case, bringing accountability for the haunting tragedy that befell Kenyatta. Thank you for watching this episode of Urban Crime Stories. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for future updates on this case and others. If you enjoy our content, please leave a comment, like the video, and share it with your friends. We greatly appreciate your support. Stay safe, stay informed, and I'll see you next time on another episode of Urban Crime Stories.